Hello, and welcome to Dining with Death, where we discuss infamous cases of death and murder that have an element of food to them, and then I cook or sample the food from the story. Before we begin, please hit the like button if you like the video, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more from me. You can also join my Patreon, and I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. We have a very big goal there. Thanks for joining me. I'm Stacy Lee. Let's begin. I cover some pretty strange stories here on Dining with Death. We talk about terrible killers. We talk about crazy cults with extreme beliefs. We talk about affairs and scandals. And we talk about people who vanish into thin air. Well, I'd rate this story right up there with some of the weirder things we've covered. This whole story is almost too strange to be true, but it is. This woman is Victoria Nazirova. She is a Russian native who lived in New York City for many years. She arrived in New York around 2014, and she didn't like to talk about her past. That's probably because she was being hunted by the Russian police and a very, very angry daughter. In 2014, Ala Alexinko mysteriously disappeared in Russia. At the time, Victoria was living not only in the area somewhere, but with Ala. Victoria and Ala were roommates, and they were, to everyone who knew them, best friends. They seemed a bit of an odd match. Ala is older and looks like a sweet little granny. Victoria is a very high maintenance woman who wears expensive makeup and almost always a fur, but people figured they were just an odd couple and they didn't think too much about it until Ala vanished. Ala has a daughter, this woman, Nadia Ford. On the day that her mother, Ala, disappeared, Nadia called her mother over a hundred times because she was very concerned. There had never been a time when Nadia, who was living in New York, called her mother in Russia and her mother didn't pick up immediately. So Nadia knew something was very, very wrong. Nadia gets on a plane and flies to Russia. She gets to her mother's house in the city of Krasnodar and she enters as Victoria is coming down the stairs to meet her. Nadia gives Victoria what she calls a Russian bear hug, and as she does, she whispers in Victoria's ear, I will choke you to death if you don't tell me where my mother is. Nadia was convinced that Victoria had killed her mom. Victoria started yelling nervously, your mother's alive, she's alive. Then she ran up the stairs with Nadia chasing her. Victoria locked herself in the bedroom and Nadia began to look around in the house. The house was spotless. It had been cleaned from top to bottom. And one other thing, all of the photos of Ala had been taken down and replaced with photos of Victoria. Victoria had basically taken Ala's place after she disappeared, continuing to live in the house that Ala owned as if it were her own. Russia is a crazy place. You can get away with a lot there. My sister went on a mission for the Mormon church. She lived in Russia for two years and she speaks Russian. And she has some stories about Russia. It is a very, it's very much still the Wild West, only not the West. <laughs> Nadia then goes on a months long search for her mother in Russia. Everywhere she goes, she hangs missing flyers and asks people if they've seen her mother. Then Nadia had an idea. In Russia, you can bribe your way into pretty much anything you want, if you can pay for it. So Nadia goes to the records department that houses toll booth photos and pays the employee to pull photos from the day her mother went missing. There, as plain as day, is this photo. It is of Victoria and Alla in a car together. Victoria is driving and Alla is in the passenger seat. This photo was taken October 5th, 2014 at 10 in the morning, the day Ala disappeared and was never seen again. Nadia was surprised to learn that the police knew of this photo and they had brought Victoria in for questioning. They did not arrest Victoria at the time because they were still gathering evidence, but when they went to arrest her, she had fled to New York City. Fast forward two years to 2016. Nadia has been living in New York since 2014 and she'd become close friendly with this woman, her beautician, whose name is Olga Zvik. Now, notice how much the two women look alike. On August 28, 2016, Victoria called Olga, who lived in Queens, and told her that she was leaving on a vacation to Mexico in the morning and she needed an emergency eyelash repair. Those of you that wear eyelash extensions, the kind you get done at a salon, know that if a chunk comes out, 
you look a little crazy and so you have to get it fixed. I've tried those salon lashes, I can't handle them. I don't look like this 95% of the time. 95% of the time I look like I live under a bridge and I like to wash my face and scrub my eyes so I can't do those lashes. But <laughs> those of you who have worn them, you know if a big piece falls out, they look really bad. So Victoria was using this as an excuse to get a hold of Olga. I've been asked on my TikTok several times why I don't appear in my videos like a green screen like most people do and I'm like, I ain't got time for this. I'm not doing this every day. <laughs> <laughs> to make a TikTok, you're getting a little mini documentary and that's it. <laughs> I'm not getting all cleaned up on a daily basis. What am I, crazy? <laughs> well, Olga tells Victoria that she's sorry, but it's her day off and she's not at the salon. Victoria begs and pleads with Olga to fix her lashes, telling her she's the only one she trusts to do a good job. Olga, feeling sorry for Victoria, finally acquiesces and tells Victoria that she will fix her lashes from home. So Victoria drives to Queens and arrives at Olga's house after they speak on the phone. When Victoria shows up, she has three square pieces of cheesecake with her and she tells Olga she's brought her the cheesecake as a thank you for doing this favor. Olga takes the cheesecake and sets it aside, but Victoria becomes very insistent that Olga try the cheesecake. Victoria tells her it's the best cheesecake in New York and she got it special for her. So Olga obliges Victoria and she has a bite of the cheesecake. 20 minutes later, Olga very suddenly felt sick, and before she could even go and lie down, she passed out. When she woke up, Victoria was gone, but Olga believed she remembered Victoria helping her to bed, and she thought she saw Victoria walking around her room. The next day, a neighbor watched as a woman who looked very much like Olga pulled up outside Olga's flat and walked inside Olga's house carrying a container of chicken soup. The neighbor watched as Victoria went into Olga's house and appeared in the window of Olga's bedroom. There is no better way to get information than a good nosy neighbor. I had one in Austin. I never worried about leaving my place. I, I knew I had this nosy neighbor. <laughs> this neighbor lived really close. The two buildings are really close and she could see in different windows of Olga's apartment. Victoria fed Olga some of the soup and then the neighbor watched as Victoria cleaned the bowl the soup had been in and left. The day went by and this neighbor got concerned. He and Olga were friends and so he went over to check on her. He knocked on the door but got no answer. He let himself in as he had done before and went up to the bedroom where he found Olga passed out in bed dressed in lingerie. There were pills scattered all over the floor and on the bed and for some reason, even though it was summer, the heat had been set to high. The man called an ambulance and Olga was taken to New York Presbyterian Hospital in Queens. The hospital began to run tests and included in those tests was a urine analysis and a blood count. Neither of those tests showed any illegal substances. Olga was in the hospital for three days and she was released on September 1st, 2016. Olga's sister, who was living in their home country of Ukraine, heard her sister was very ill and she flew to New York. As soon as she heard what happened, she contacted the police. NYPD detective Kevin Rogers took the call and listened as Olga's sister explained to him that she believed her sister had been poisoned. She also told him that Olga's valuables had been stolen. Olga was missing jewelry and shoes and very expensive handbags. Detective Rogers interviewed Olga who told him that the last thing she remembers is eating the cheesecake, getting very sick and passing out. Olga claims she doesn't even remember being in the hospital much. The officer found this in Olga's home. These are the containers that held the cheesecake. There were still some crumbs from the crust inside the containers and Detective Rogers bagged them and took them in as evidence. He then tried to find Victoria Nazirova, but he could not. For weeks and then months, he searches for Victoria, but she has disappeared from New York City. Olga Zvik returned to work and one day while speaking with a client, the client told her a very interesting story. She said a few months earlier, a business owner in Queens named Ruben Borakov matched with a woman on a Russian dating site. This woman said she loved to cook. Her name, Victoria Nazirova. Ruben and Victoria met for dinner and Victoria served him a piece of fish she had cooked. Just after swallowing the fish, Reuben passed out. Victoria took his cash, 
credit cards and store cards and went on a shopping spree while this man was passed out. He was semi-conscious for two days. Victoria got Ruben into her car, drove him to his dry cleaning business, walked him inside, emptied the cash drawer and disappeared. His employees then called an ambulance. When Olga heard this story, she immediately contacted Detective Rogers and told him the story. This is honestly like something you see in a movie, right? This Russian woman going around poisoning people, drugging people, dumping them off. It, this is a crazy story. It, it gets crazier. <laughs> Detective Rogers was still looking for Victoria and while scouring social media, he found her. On Facebook, Detective Rogers saw this photo. This is so genius. He noticed that Victoria was wearing mirrored sunglasses. In the reflection of the glasses, he could see the apartment building where she lived and the car she was driving. Social media can be so dangerous. As I'm recording this this morning, <laughs> there's like a scandal in my town right now. It's really bad and it all happened because of social media. <laughs> if you've got stuff to hide, don't put it on social media, okay? Just like common sense, people. On March 20th, 2017, Victoria was arrested and taken into custody. Her apartment was searched and police found multiple stolen handbags, rings, and IDs all belonging to Olga Zvik. After meeting Victoria in person and realizing how much she looked like Olga, Detective Rogers knew Victoria was trying to kill Olga in order to steal her identity. The lab tests on the cheesecake containers came back. One of them was positive for a drug called phenazepam, a potentially lethal sedative used primarily in Russia. And here's the thing about this drug. I don't know if we have it in the States. The effects of this drug intensify in the heat. So that's why Olga's heat was turned on even though it didn't need to be on. And that just tells you how much research Victoria had done. Probably a psychopath, just a really, really interesting and devious and evil person. In February 2018, Victoria pled not guilty. She fired her attorneys and caused other delays, and then the pandemic hit, delaying her trial indefinitely. But finally, on January 30th, 2023, the trial began. After only 90 minutes of deliberation, the jury found Victoria guilty of attempted murder, and she was sentenced to 21 years in jail. Then I would come back home, I would look over my shoulder because I was afraid, I was worried that she would see her again. I was worried that she would come back and finish what she started. Now you get shuffled off to a state prison where you'll be blended into the general population and be known only by a number. You see, in this place, in this country, there's a price to pay when you try to end someone's life. There's no excuse for what you did here except the exploitation of your own self-interest, and in doing so, you threw everything of value into the wind. So for that, I sentence you to the bottom. Count one, attempted murder, eight felony, 21 years in jail. Once Victoria serves her time for this crime, she will be deported to Russia, where she will be tried for the murder of Allah Alexenko. This is an evil woman, like I said, most likely a psychopath, who has no empathy for other people. She will do whatever it takes to get what she wants, and she doesn't care who she hurts or kills in the process. So you know, we are going to make cheesecake. There are thousands of elaborate cheesecake recipes on the internet. So I'm gonna go in the opposite direction. With the holidays coming up, I am going to give you the easiest and most delicious cheesecake recipe you have ever tasted. It's not traditional, technically cheesecake, but I can promise you, hold me to this. Whoever you make this for is going to love it and it takes seven minutes to make. Stay with me as we go dining with death. We are ready to cook. That is the last time you will ever hear me say that. This is the last episode ever of Dining with Death. It makes me a little sad, I'm not gonna lie. I wanna thank you for your support over the last three and a half years, but I'm really excited for the channel to rebrand and move on to Dark Hearts with Stacey Lee. We're still gonna be covering all the things that you love, true crime stories, cults, women who kill, serial killers, mysteries, dark stories. I'm really excited for it and I think it was time. With that said, let's get into this cheesecake recipe. 
All you're gonna need is two bricks of cream cheese, some lemon juice, a can of Eagle Brand milk, and a prepared graham cracker crust. That's it. Take your two bricks of cream cheese that are at room temperature or a little bit soft, and add in the can of Eagle Brand milk. This stuff is liquid gold. It is just so rich and creamy. I use a third of a cup of lemon juice. It adds that nice brightness that this recipe needs. And you really do need an electric mixer for this. You can do it by hand. It would just be kind of exhausting, but it can be done with a whisk. You wanna beat it until it's creamy and smooth and all the lumps are gone. Scrape the sides down and make sure you get those little lumps of cream cheese because you don't want those in your finished product. And mix it again. It's nice and creamy and it tastes so good. Get that graham cracker crust and dump your filling in it get every last drop with a spatula. I told you guys this was easy. It just couldn't be easier, right? Smooth it out with your spatula. Give it a little tap tap to get rid of the air bubbles. And then of course you've got to take that mandatory taste, right? It's like the law. Cover it up with the piece of plastic the pie crust comes with, or you can use a piece of tin foil and put that in the refrigerator for at least three hours. Okay, it's a few hours later. Honestly, I could have waited a little bit longer, but this was a long day of filming by the time I was done with this and some other episodes, so I was ready to go to bed. <laughs> it's a little soft still, but it looks good, right? Now, you can eat it just like this, or you can top it. Of course, you can use canned pie filling, but I'm gonna show you something that costs a little bit more and is so worth it. This is a fruit compote and you can do this with any fruit. You take about a cup of fruit, a tablespoon of lemon juice, and about half the amount of sugar to fruit, or you can do one to one if you want it really sweet. Put it over the heat and mash it up with your potato masher and you have got fruit compote. It sounds fancy, it ain't. It's just fruit, sugar, and lemon juice. And it's so delicious. Do it with any fruit, put it on ice cream, so good. So we've got our beautiful piece of cheesecake and we've got this beautiful berry compote. Spoon that over the top. This just could not be any easier. Let's give it a taste. It's ridiculously rich and really good for how simple it is. This isn't a five-star dessert. This is something that you throw together when you want a crowd pleaser and you don't have a lot of time and you don't wanna spend a lot of money. It's not traditional cheesecake. It tastes like cheesecake, but doesn't have the texture of cheesecake. But I promise you, whoever you serve this to is gonna like it. It's just something everyone enjoys. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Thank you so much for joining me on this last episode of Dining with Death. I can't thank you enough for your support over the years. I hope you have a Merry Christmas and I hope you're enjoying the holiday season. Stay safe, my friends, and be kind to each other. I will not see you on the next episode of Dining with Death, but hopefully I'll see you on the first episode of Dark Hearts with Stacey Lee. Thanks so much, you guys. I love ya. I'll see you later. Bye.